The big question we are answering today, should a small business really have an organizational chart? Hey guys, it's Justin Goodbread here with the Financially Simple Experience. That's right, we're having an experience today. We're going to learn something, and I want you to learn something, then I want you to go apply it to your business. You know, I've been in business a very long time, 25 years. Man, it's hard to believe that almost. 25 years of my life. If you, have, if you can name it in business, I think I've just about seen it. I think I've just about seen it. I've seen a lawnmower in a swimming pool as a landscaper. I have seen lawsuits. I have seen complaints. I have seen happy people. I have seen, well, happy does, is a relative word. We, Whenever you're in business, you see a lot of different things. One of the things I've noticed in my career is this idea that we should have organizational charts. And I got to be honest with you. Whenever I first saw a small business with an organizational chart, my mind went to what an utter waste of time. Now, I know you as a business owner, you're probably sitting here saying, Justin, please tell me you're not going to talk about organizational charts. Well, you already heard the question. We're going to answer, should we actually have organizational charts in our business? But before before we dive into that, I got to go ahead and recognize that most of us small business owners don't even think it makes sense to have an organizational chart in our business. I was one of them. I'm being truthful here. Being, I'm being authentic is what I was told I should do. Being authentic here. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the corporate types come out of corporate America. And you've heard me rant about this on the podcast sometimes. They come into our small business world and they say, hey, you need to have a, a value, a mission statement, a vision statement, a value statement, and you need to build an organizational chart. And you and I are awake at night, not really thinking about the organizational chart. Let's be honest. We're thinking about a myriad of different things. How are we going to feed our families? How are we going to deal with uh, paying employees? How do we give the employees the pay raises that they truly deserve? How do we bring in that next new client? How do we eliminate a client? All those things that you and I are thinking about, I can tell you, in fact, I'd be willing to bet you that you're not laying awake at night saying, man, I can't wait to deal with the organizational chart. But I found myself saying that same thing not too long ago. In fact, it's been the last two years I've read thousands of books, literally. That's not a figurative statement. I've literally read thousands of business books in my life. Um, there, I don't think there's a book at Barnes & Noble or Books A Million today that I have not read in the business section. What's interesting is no matter who writes the book, inevitably you're going to see something about an organizational chart. I'm just finishing up my fifth, sixth, seventh reading of Michael Gerber's E-Myth Revisited. And right in the heart of the book, it talks about an organizational chart. So when I read that, I had my mind immediately went to my dear friend and colleague, Mr. David Kent. How are you, brother? Doing great. How are you doing, Justin? Well, I'm just having a little, myself a little spell here talking about the organizational chart. So you know how <laughs> I'm doing. No, I'm greatly blessed and highly favored. You know, you know that about me. But Amen. friends, whenever I was reading this, this organizational chart, my mind went to David Kent. Now, for those of you who do not know, David is the director of our Heritage Business Planning Department. He deals with business owners nationally, um, along with myself and some of our other colleagues here in the firm. His job is to help business owners reach their desired goals. And whenever David and I began working together a couple of years ago, his one of his very first things that he imparted on me, wisdom, if I may, was, Justin, you've got to get comfortable with the organizational chart. So David's here today to kind of dive into 10 things, 10 benefits from using an organizational smart chart in a small business. So David, you've heard my little rant there. You and I know my history, yep. but let's, let's dive into these 10 points and hopefully at the end of today's a podcast, our business owners will take away the wisdom that I've gained, and then we'll talk about how it's benefited our company by using this organizational chart. So you've given me 10 sure. different items, 10 different things that we small business owners should know as a benefit. What would be the first one? Well, the first thing that you, you got to realize is that, you know, without an organizational chart, uh, without being able to visually see um, the corporate structure, uh, the employee has no idea what the internal structure of the company is and uh, what its hierarchy is. And I know that in small business, there's not a lot of levels, obviously, but it's still an important, uh, it's an important thing for them to be able to visually see where they fall within the inter internal structure. 
you know, it's pretty amazing that in Michael Gerber's book, he talks about this exact thing. But what he identified, as, as you as you clearly did, is that there's not as many levels. Candidly, the business owner is often the, what they say, chief cook and bottle washer, right. often the same sentence. And so, David, right. whenever they're building out the organizational chart, is it something that you would want to look at uh, placing the titles on the areas for the future business? Is, will that help as you're visualizing this? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, definitely. So you want to you want to start out with a title, uh, and it's important for small business owners owners to understand that they are the owner, and that they have employees. The employees need to know who do they report to, and who do they contact if they have a question. That's the second real big benefit of an organizational chart, uh, because many times the owner is being seen as the one that has all the answers, uh, even though they may have some a supervisor in place. The employees jump that supervisor to the owner and it drives the owner nuts uh, because they're not communicating through their supervisor. So we can see the hierarchy. We can see the contact, the informational flow. I think those are the first two. What's the third exactly. one? Well, um, basically, you, you help the, the employee understand their roles and responsibilities in the, uh, the, the business, basically. You know, what, what do I do? What is my contribution? And what is my role and my responsibility in the entire picture? So it shows them a, a picture of how they affect the organization. So that's a that's a big benefit. They need to know how they how they benefit the organization. Okay, I can see that benefit. I'm interested in your fourth point here. This is intriguing to me. What's your fourth point? Well, whenever you onboard a new employee, the, one of the first things you can do is show them an organizational chart so they get a true feeling for the size of the organization the reporting structure and the internal structure of the organization and where they fall in within that structure. So when they're applying for a job and when they're starting, they know who they're answering to, who they need to contact when they have a problem, what their role is in the organization and, and, and how their responsibility makes a difference in the organization. So if we pause there and we look at this organizational chart, we've often seen it with circles or squares, lines going in between, some sort of a hierarchy type position. Oftentimes in a small business, you'll have the owners at the top. If it's a two or three, uh, like I say chuck in a truck is what I often heard people say in the in the service industry. If it's a chuck in the truck strategy, you may end up having one with two yep. or three people underneath them. If it's a business like ours, we may have three or four tiers and then smaller or bigger small businesses could have six or seven tiers within the organization. One of the things that I'm interested in right. is that fourth thing is it allows the employee to see the bigger picture. Um, David, you and I have seen small businesses where the owner's name is literally among five or six different functionalities of the business. They may be right. the CEO, but they also may at the time the time position be the CFO who's also doing the accounts payable, accounts receivable. So their name could be in two different places. And what I think is interesting about that fourth person, about the fourth point allows to see the quick view of the entire chart is it also provides long-term management of the employee information. Um, it allows, a, allows right. you to manage the overall employee tenor, the employee communication. Am, am I saying that right as I think through this? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a good way to document how the organization's changed in the year, two years, three years. It's a way to track employee data so you can actually see, okay, how is the organizational chart grown over a series of years and what players within that chart organization grows, they need to be able to visually show the employees where they are stepping away from a specific task and someone else is assuming that role. It's really a big piece of the communication. So we've just covered five different positions. We talk about the hierarchy in place. It shows how, how information flows to the hierarchy. It says who you're to report to. It has clarity to the roles and the duties, kind of the boundaries around the employee's position. It can be used as a management tool for saving data um, in this position. So I can't wait to hear number six. But before we jump in number six, let's hear a little bit from this week's sponsor. We all know the old adage, work on your business rather than in your business. The professionals of Heritage Business Advisors will help you to improve your business's value using such tools as strategic planning, operational efficiency strategies, and risk management. To find out more about how we can help your business, visit heritagebusinessadvisors.com. 
So it's interesting to hear that commercial, David, with Heritage Business Advisors, because that is you and I and several of our colleagues here. And this That's strategy right. of using the operational structure or the organizational chart through the operational structure is amazing because we get down to point number six here, which I think is very vital. So we covered five. Let's cover the last five of the reasons why small business owners need to have an organizational structure. Sure. Well, number six is uh, it since we have clearly defined the roles and responsibilities of everyone within the organization and what role they play, it helps reduce duplication and overlapping of duties. So now people know clearly what they are responsible for, and they're much less likely to be overworking or working in someone else's area, doing work and doing double work within the organization, if that makes sense. It does. We, you know, we often talk about strategic planning and we're coming up into our strategic planning season for our company with, you know, the, the many, many, many dozens, if not a hundred of clients that we serve nationally with this small business enterprise, uh, small business consulting area. And when we look at this, we talk about the overlapping and duplication of work for number six, but number seven is it clarifies, as you said, the works and the task. So by having this right. oper- organizational chart, if I'm looking at what you're trying to say, and please help me understand this, you're, you're trying sure. to push it through strategic planning, and now you're trying to outline who is going to do what within the company? Is that what your number seven is? Exactly. So in number six, we're basically saying, okay, everyone has their, their, their roles defined, and uh, we want to make sure we don't overlap or duplicate. So number seven is really this is where the organizational chart ties into each job description or role description because now we're actually outlining the task and the work that each specific role plays. So as an organization gets bigger, it's very important that the visually the employees see how the organization is changing and how their role within the organization has changed because as you know, change is the biggest thing, the biggest challenge we all face. I also see this idea, I think number eight here, is that we can manage our workload. Talk to me a little bit about that point directly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just basically um, we all want to do a good job and we all want to try to make a biggest, um, you know, the biggest uh, effect on the business in a positive way. Uh, But many times, um, basically, we spend time on areas of the business that don't apply to our role. So this really defines for managers what they need to focus on uh, with their employees and, and, and what what tasks have to get done within their area. So it really just brings some more focus to the organization, if you will, and, and it shows it in a very visual way. So we've gone through eight points. We're down to our last two. What is the ninth reason why business owners should have a written organizational chart? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we have to make decisions fast. And so this allows us to visually uh, be able to show how work gets done in each department. And so as a, as again, as a business scales up and it, and it adds new employees, uh, we begin to create departments or divisions and they focus in particular areas and they have to be able to report up through the management to be able to get things done. So this, again, just helps you outline uh, what work gets done within particular departments. So we're getting to the 10th point here, but before we jump into number 10, I want to kind of do a quick cursory recap of what we're talking about. We're talking about the organizational chart, friends, and how me included, whenever I first dealt with this whole world of organizing my thought in the company, we often say, you know what, this is a waste of time and energy. And so far, Dave has outlined nine different points. And so I want to go through this one one more time before we get to the 10th, because the 10th is to me just as vital as the previous nine. So the first one is, it's going to show us a clear picture of the company structure and the hierarchies. That's number one. Number two, it lets people know who to report to. Number three, it helps clarify the roles and the responsibilities. Number four, it lets the employees learn about the company structure. Five is it allows a management tool for managers. Six, it prevents overlapping and duplicating work. Seven is it clearly identifies the works and tasks of the employees. Number eight is it's an effective way for managers to manage the workload. Number nine was, as you know, we business owners have to make lickety split decisions. So it helps us make fast decisions on how to bring the team together to hit deal with some trouble or benefit or opportunities. What's number 10? Well, basically, it provides the employees an opportunity to see a promotional channel. 
um, and also a way for us to optimally allocate staff. So uh, as the business changes, we're able to see what people we have in place um, and we're able to help create a promotional plan for them uh, for their own personal development and then also in the organization's development. And one thing I might add to point nine is that, you know, one of the things that I always do with all of our clients uh, when we're working on organizational charts is to create a current chart and a future chart. Where are we going? If you can show your staff, your employees, uh, this is where you are currently, but this is where we're going. It really, I mean, uh, you know, that, that, that old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. And, and it helps them so clearly see in very easy terms, okay, I see it. I see where we're going. I see why we're going there. It really helps get some buy-in. You know, what's interesting is that's a perfect segue into what I want to talk about. Okay, so we talked about the 10 areas, that, 10 reasons why we small balls business owners should have an organizational chart. And if you're like me and you say this is an utter waste of time, I got to tell you, it's not. I've actually seen firsthand in our own organization and in dozens of organizations who, who whenever business owners actually take a few minutes, just a few seconds and outline where they're at today and candidly what jobs you as the business owner is doing day in, day out that you shouldn't be doing. So now you have an avenue to create a new job position as you're thinking through this. But number two, David, to that exact point, I want to dive a little bit deeper on that onion. Let's peel it back just a little bit more. This sure. idea that I'm a business owner, you're a business owner, we know where we're going, we know where we're at, we know where we want to be. But this actually puts the framework together, it kind of connects the dots for us. Why is yeah. that? Well, I mean, so again, it's a visual representation of where we are today and where we're going. You can even look back and see where we've been. It tells a story. From that story, you're able to say, it's really the beginning of the whole story. You visually see the story, then you are able to break it down to each role's description and what part everyone plays. It works very well with the budget. So you can clearly see, okay, these are the positions within the organization. I can assign budget numbers to those and I can help build the organization. What's it gonna take for us to get from you know, eight employees to 12 employees. And what's that budget look like? It's just a visual representation of the entire organization. And it really, it, it, it's so simple, it makes a huge difference. Well, and with that, guys, we're going to sign off. So, David, I appreciate you coming on the show today, brother. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So friends, as you know, we deal with businesses day in, day out. This is the network. This is the the, the network that we've built, this is the fun part of what we deal with. And as you've just seen, this is just 10 examples. And we could go on and on and on. These are 10 quick examples that we wanted to deal with as far as the organizational chart. Why? Well, candidly, because I just finished up Michael Gerber's ebook again, and I would just said is the simplest thing to do that rewards you the greatest. So my challenge to you is this. Okay, here's the experience. You just heard Mr. David Kent, MBA, talking about the benefits of the organizational chart. I personally have dealt with this. All I can give you is my word that it's unbelievable the impact it has in our business. So my challenge to you is this, for in order for this to be an experience, when you get done driving your car, when you get done cutting the grass, if you're laying on the pool float at this particular time, listening to the podcast, whenever you sit in your lazy boy tonight or next time you're at your desk, grab a sheet of paper, a blank piece of computer paper, and give it a try. Just put just some little boxes and some little lines and just pour your mind out on where your company is today and list the job duties out. You'll be amazed how easy, but yet how thought provoking this exercise is. It's kind of like flossing, kind of like brushing your teeth. It's easy. Many of us don't do it, and it's so stinking easy. So friends, this is Justin Goodbread signing off from Financially Simple. Look, I realize life is hard. I realize that, but life is good. We have an opportunity to improve our businesses. Going into 2021, it's gonna be the best year of your business if you hang in here. I realize life is good, but life can be frustrating. Organizational charts, yeah, I've dealt with them a time or two in my life. They are frustrating. Money doesn't have to be. We're going to continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Hey, y'all go out and make it a great day.
This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information.